like they're annoying. Melissa can sing loud, so we'll get
Amen. Well, I want to know more about my Jesus. Amen. I want to know more about my Lord. That's our, our desire, ain't it? Amen. You want to know how you want to know, you find out more about him? Right there. <laughs> he said the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. I was reading it today and uh, thinking on it. As a matter of fact, we didn't know if maybe we was going to be there tonight. We're not. But I sure do appreciate the Word of God, don't you? It's good to be saved. Good to be here tonight. Hope you uh, feasted on the preaching Sunday. Name what preaching? Brother Todd preached, didn't he? Sure did. I do remember Stan, his stepdad, and their family. And Well, Todd and all of them, no doubt. Uh, a death affects the whole family. And uh, so be much in prayer for them tonight. Just remember the sick. Got a lot of objects God knows all about. Help us pray for them. Remember Josh Sunday, he's going to uh, Laurel Valley. Brother Brian, Brother Jeff's going to uh, down there, Crabtree. There you go. And uh, I don't know if any of the others going anywhere or not. But uh, hey, God's good, ain't he? I've been praying God opened doors for them. I really have. I mean, I, I hate to see them not be here, but God opened doors. got to go. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a difference in God opening the door and you just going hunting the door. Big difference in that. But, uh, you know, God opens the door. you got to go. And uh should be much in prayer for them. And uh been praying for a lot of things. And God, hey, and God's a big God, ain't he? He's uh he's not overloaded with prayers. He can't handle them, uh, you know, where he can't handle but he can. He can still handle them. And uh so let's just pray for one another. Anybody got any objects you want to mention or raising you your hand? So everybody can and will let's come together around the altar. Go to the Lord in prayer. Keep praying for Brother Larry. We went to see him the other night. And uh, and Brother Jerry went and rode up there. And he's uh, he had to have a hip surgery. And then uh, he had fell one time before that. And uh, so he's been, been in a battle. So let's remember that. He is keeping up with us. He is. Not a day goes by. He don't text me or something. And uh, so let's do remember, Brother Larry, when you pray. Do. Jeff, lead us, will you? So our Father, we're thankful once again for the privilege you've given us. We have the vow, God, tonight. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for loving us. God, giving you the Son to die on the rugged cross so that we can have life. Thank you, Lord, for the Word of God that you put in our heart tonight. Lord, I pray you'd help us. God, I pray for those that be watching by Facebook, God, those in the parking lot, those sitting in the midst. God, I ask you to help them for that. No doubt there's uh, storms going to be coming up in their lives and people's lives. And, and Lord, I pray God you to help them. Lord, just give them the word of God to comfort them and move on them. Father, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. And God, how you've helped us in these days. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for the cause of the ministry. Thank you for allowing us to be a pastor. God, I thank you for winning the Baptist Church, what it means to us. God, I pray you'd help us. God, to strive and to be a better pastor, help us in the Word of God. I pray for Brother Jamie in the meeting that's coming up in the tent meeting. God, I pray you bless it and God touch it. I'll be with a youth meeting on Saturday. God, that you bless it. And, and Brother Todd there, and Lord, I pray God bless him Sunday at Victory. God, we'll just go to you and praise you for everything that you do. God, we love you. God, thank you for being so good to us. God, watching over us on the road, and we'll praise you and give you glory for everything that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. You have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Mark, chapter 5. Mark, no, Mark chapter 4. We'll probably go over into chapter 5. 
But we, uh, uh, this morning, and, and looking over Facebook, there was a post that sort of, you know, I mean, really it bothered me because it's sending their own message. But uh, that's between them and the Lord. But Guy had posted on there that since he got saved, his life is being like, and it wasn't heaven. You know, and, and, you know, and I thought, Man, what's people going to think on that? And uh, so actually we got thinking about some things where God comforted us. I mean, he promised us uh, that he'd never leave us nor forsake us. And he, he said he's a brother, stick a cl- uh, he's a friend, stick it close in a brother. I mean, there's just so much. I thought of the scripture, and, and I reckon that the suffering of this present time ain't even worthy to be compared. Yes, sir. What's going to be revealed in us. And uh, I, I just thinking on that, and I honestly was wanting to preach on on uh, some words of Jesus to comfort folk and to help folk. Hey, if you want comfort, you may be in a storm this evening. Or uh, and, and let me tell you this: you're either come out of one, you're either in one, or you're going to be in one. You see, storms come, and uh, I, I begin to think on this and. And, uh, you know, I was thinking all day, man, Lord, just working a scripture in our mind, and that's what we was wanting to preach on. And uh, we got stuck right here in Mark chapter 4 and about this storm. And I want to preach tonight on sudden storms. And you look at, and read about the, the Sea of Galilee and all and where it was because of the, uh, the location. And the, I, I, I don't remember all them words that I've read about and all that. Sometimes because the wind would blow and come off the mountains, it would cause a storm right in the middle of the sea to come up. Just unexpectedly. It all wants it to come. And, and uh, you get thinking, that's how life is. I mean, you ever been going just real good and smooth? And man, I'm telling you, you think, hey, man, this is the life right here. But before you get up the next morning or before you go to bed that evening, Hey, listen, your world can be turned upside down. Hey, they suddenly come. We've seen it, Josh, even in your family, and we've seen it in my family, and we've looked at your family. We'd probably find it in your family, too, how that's the way they do. But I want to give you some things from this and, uh, that might help us and, and help us all, because, hey, Lord knows, I want to be a help to you. And uh, who knows tonight who might be sitting in this congregation that may be heading for a storm in the morning. You may not know nothing about it. And all at once it may come up. I was thinking of what Todd said about Stan's daddy-in-law and uh, how that Stan had went and seen him on Saturday and had talked with him and been with him and things seemed to be going good and and said before he even got back home, or even after he got back home, just a little while, they got a phone call. And he had passed away that quick. I remember I remember having the birthday party for Ashley, uh, her thir- three-year-old birthday party. I remember having the birthday party on Thursday, or on, so it might have been, yeah, on Wednesday or Thursday. And the next day, we got, she went for a checkup, three-year checkup, and we found out she had symptoms of leukemia. And it went from work, heading home, not knowing nothing what we was going to face, to heading all the way down to Winston-Salem, sleeping in the, in, in the waiting room, sleeping in the car, sleeping in the floor upstairs. I mean, we did, they couldn't do nothing until the next day. So that's the kind of, from partying to that. Hey, how quick can it change? Hey, the Bible said, what is your life? Is as a vapor. It appeared for a little while, and then it's gone. I mean, it's, it's gone. And, and uh, if you're going through good times right now, hey, I, I just want to tell you, just be thankful for it. And I ain't going to want to discourage, but Job said this, man's days are few and full of trouble. Hey, I know churches was going good, everything going good, and just like that, things went south. Hey, I, I know preachers that how uh, things was going good in their life, and just like that, it's gone. You see, we ain't no better than anybody else. 
Hey, it rains on the just and the unjust. Hey, listen, some good men of God had died because of that virus, or so they say, but I'm just going about what they said. Because of the virus. I'm talking about men of God had more faith than I had. We all ought to have faith. But I'm talking about men that lived it. I mean, they ain't no better than Sammy Allen. Sammy Allen was gun barrel straight, lived it, and, and all. I, 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 I thought the picture were uh, before the camp, that faith camp, him was sitting out by the driveway with people coming in. Him was sitting out there praying for them. Everyone that come in. Hey, you see, nobody never knows that he's going to be gone like that. Lee Davis, a man of God, that man, what a preacher he was. And uh, man, awesome man of God. And got throat cancer. And was gone. You see, you don't have to be calling. It could be anything. Oh, but I'm telling you this, storm's going to come. Let me read this, and then we'll get into the message. The Bible said in the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. If I remember right, Josh, you taught on this Sunday, didn't you? A week ago Sunday or something. But uh, I remember I heard it somewhere. Somebody taught on it. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship. And so that it was now full. And he was in, it was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he rose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Our Father, we're thankful God just to be able to come to church. We're thankful to be able to stand behind the pulpit. God preach the infallible word of God. Lord, I ask you to help us this evening. God be a help of somebody, Lord, no doubt. Uh, Lord, this message of yours wanting to speak to somebody's heart. God, it may be somebody on Facebook. It may be somebody sitting in their midst. It may be somebody outside. God, you know, Lord, the intent that you're sending it out. God, I pray you'd take it and use it for the glory of God. And we'll praise you and give you glory for everything that you do. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen and amen. I got thinking about sudden storms. And, and I read some this afternoon and how, about how the Sea of Galilee was and how it could be calm one minute and the next minute that it could not. And, and uh, no doubt that makes you think uh, that that's the way life is. Can I tell you, I, I thought about that post that I seen and I read. When the guy got saved, God never promised him that it was going to be easy. Hey, Hey, when I got saved, he didn't say, you're going to sail on through and, and go out into heaven just like nothing ever happened. He never promised us that. Man. He didn't. He never promised us that. Hey, listen, even with Jesus on your shield, I wrote this, hey, there's still going to be storms coming. Yes, One thing, people's bad mistake, and they think when I get saved, it's going to be an easy life and everything's going to be good. Hey, I got news for you. Jesus said the world hate him. They're going to hate you. Hey, listen, they persecuted him. Hey, they put him through a trial he suffered and died on Calvary. Of course, he was doing it for us. Hey, but they done it. Who was it done it? The religious people. Hey, listen, it's people and the religious people in that day. Hey, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Hey, they all I was against him. Hey, you know who's against God? It's a lot of it's religious people. Hey, listen, I'm glad to be one of them that we are. Not one of them, but one of them. Brother Davey sung a song, one of them. 
Hey, I like to be. I'm one of them. Hey, listen, I'm part of that old-fashioned crowd, that crowd that loves God and serves God. Hey, listen, believes the old-time way. I, I'm, glad, I'm glad to be part of that crowd. Hey, listen, Jesus never promised us that Christian life would be easy. I wrote three scriptures down. I wrote that came to my mind this afternoon. Uh, he never promised us Christian life would be easy, but he did say... He did say in Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Ain't that comforting when family turns their back? Yep. Hey, when friends go off and leave you? Yep. Hey, when you feel like you're all alone, there's somebody yes, right there with you. Yes, Boy, if we could just get a hold of that. Hey, listen, we want to hang our head down when trouble comes and feel bad. Hey, when people do things to hey. We got a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. He said, I never, I will never forsake thee. He said, I never leave thee nor forsake thee. Ah, oh, but he also said in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good of them love God and call according to his purpose. Hey, no, according to his purpose. Hey, whatever happens in our life, we may not understand it. Hey, been a lot of things in my life I didn't understand. Hey, but I'm going to tell you something. Down on the street corner in Winston-Salem, we found out she had leukemia and all on Sunday morning. I didn't stay at the hospital and hang my head down and moat and pout and everything else. Hey, I was going to go to church. Have a Macintosh come to pick me up. I'm standing there on the street corner. I was standing in our next old station. But I thought to myself, Lord, I don't know why people want to turn when things go bad, when problems come. They want to quit church. They want to quit uh, uh, serving God. They want to quit doing stuff. When things get a little bad, I, I told him, and I told him down there, I said, I need you more now than I've ever needed you in my life. Amen. Hey, if there's ever a time, and boy, he brought this scripture to my mind, Brother Josh, that all things, Amen. even those things we don't understand, Hey, even those things that are how we don't like or we don't want to go through. He said, all things work together for the good to those that love God and called according to his purpose. You see, we want to think it's for our good. We say, boy, God allowed that to go on them for their purpose. Probably not. It's for his purpose. Do you know what storms do? What they should do is draw you closer to him. Yes, hey, you know them storms, you are, it ought to make you want to serve him more. It ought to make you want to go to church more. It ought to make you want to read your Bible more. Hey, but so many times I've seen it, people will choose to quit instead of going on with God at the worst time in their life when they needed him the most. Can I tell you, he still loves them. Hey, I thought about Romans how 8 and 18, for I reckon, I just love the word reckon also, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Hey, you see, if everything's bad every day for the rest of your life, that'll not even compare what's waiting on us on the other side. Hey, you lose everything in your family. You lose your family. You lose your home like Job did. Hey, listen, Job didn't sit, have his sights down here. He had it a whole lot farther. Yes, Job got to the point, Brother Jeff, he looked on the left and he didn't see him. He looked on the right, didn't see him. He looked all around up and behind and every which way other in the world. Not in them same words. But he said, uh, he said, I don't see him. But he said this, he knowed he was there. And when he got done, he said he's going to come forth like gold. That's what storms do for you. It polishes you. A, a clay, when they make a potter that makes a clay, you know what he does before he puts the finishing touches on it? Puts it in the fire. Oh, yeah. We don't like the fire. But I'm telling you, to come out what God wants you to be, you may have to go through the fire. You preachers, you gonna, you may go through the fire to get to that place. Hey, you, well, I've been called to preach, and I, I got it right then. Hey, you're gonna have to go through the fire, yes, sir. Before he uses you like he's really got, got for you. 
He does. Listen, that fire, we don't like it. But it's needful. Then when he's done with it, you know what he does? He puts it out on display. Oh, listen. He does. I thought of that verse, and I got many more I could have went to. That story came to my mind. But I want to give you this. From this scripture right here, some things to remember. When sudden storms come in your life. Just got four. Won't be too long. But hopefully it'll help you. Oh, listen. The storm. Notice this. The storm did not take God, Jesus, by surprise. He said, how do you know, preacher? He said in verse 1, he said, let us pass over unto the other side. He didn't say, fellas, we're going to try it and see what happens. We're going to, we might get over there. He said, let us pass over. One place said, let us go unto the other side. I mean, just, he said, we're going. And I tell you what, he's told us we're going to make it. Hey, I've read the back of the book. I've read the middle of the book. Hey, I've read about all that God's got awaiting for us. Hey, he didn't say, I'll help you maybe hold on or maybe make it. He said, I got a place prepared for you. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. What's, uh, what's down the road? Jesus done knows who what's awaiting on us. But he promised, he said, let us go into the other side. What's he saying? They're going to the other side. He knew the storm was going to come. Was he twiddling his thumbs, feeling sorry, and all that? The Bible said he was laying in the hinder part of the ship, had a pillar, sleeping. I posted that song, Cries Woken the Master. And that's somebody said, where did you get that at? said, God don't sleep. I said, I said uh, ma'am, it's in the Bible. He was in the flesh like you and I. He got tired. Hey, he got hungry. Sure, he was as much God, but he was also as much man. Hey, the fleshly part of him got weak. Hey, the fleshly part of him got tired. Hey, sometimes he just had to take a nap. And he laid in the hinder part of the ship and was back our sleep. You see, it didn't take him by surprise. No, he said, let us. Jesus already told them they were going. Then he said this, going to pass over to the other side. Hey, listen, we, why don't, can't we just believe God's word? I wish people would believe God's word as much as they do social media, as much as they believe the news, as much as they believe somebody Hey, listen, every one of them can lie to you and, and, and tell you a lie. Hey, but the Word of God is not going to lie to you. It'll stand. It's settled in heaven. Hey, it's going to, in the last days, sir, it's going to judge them. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Hey, listen. Better believe that Bible. Hey, put your faith in the Bible, not in man. Hey, you have confidence in man, man will let you down. He ain't never let me down. 59 year old, knocking on 60. And uh, I know I'm younger than some of you. But in all them years of serving the Lord, they've been ups and they've been downs. They've been good times. They've been hard times. There's been times I wanted to quit, but I couldn't. Hey, in all that, Boy, I'm sure glad I got the word of God. He promised me I'm going to make it. He didn't promise me everything be easy, but he said you're going to make it. I want you to notice something else. I, I, I thought of this. I wrote it down. The grace of God. I, I love that, that singer, the green. He passed away. I love, love him. He makes this statement at the end of a testimony. Him a weeping. He had kidney disease and all that. And it's before he died, and he made this statement. He's talking about that song, uh, you know, that can't walk with Jesus, something like that. But he made this statement. He said, the grace of God will not take you where the grace of God won't sustain you. Amen. Hey, the storms are coming. There will be grace. 
For the grace of God, I hope you get through. How, how, how have we got through this last, t- last year? You know how we got through it? It wasn't Dr. Fabluji. He It wasn't Paluki. It wasn't some wop. You know how we got through it? The grace of God. Hey, we ain't no better than other churches. I know churches had, had a whole lot more trouble with it than what we have. I say, thank you, Lord. Be very welcome in us. and could be it. We don't know. Hey, remember this. Remember this. I like this. If I did just shot it down this afternoon, just in, 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 in probably in an hour, maybe. I, I mean, this God, I mean, God this burning this on my, I never had, I've been a long time since I had a message that God just worked on my mind. I'm talking about coming back from Iceville, going to Iceville, sitting in the van waiting. I mean, I'm thinking on this. Boy, listen. Remember, Jesus is on board your shield. Hey, the storms are coming. The storm is a slap in the fire. And never did it. They didn't go wake him up right off the start. Isn't that the way we are? We'll try everything in the world, handle it ourselves. Then when all else fails, let's go get Jesus and get him to help us. Hey, I want to tell you something. He ain't a spare tire. Amen. Hey, you just don't get him out when you need him. Hey, listen, you ought to try him with the little things as much as the big things. Hey, listen, he's God. He can handle them all. It don't matter what kind of problem it is or what kind of storm it is. Amen. Somebody. I don't know who it was. One of them or maybe they all said together. We got to go wake Jesus up. Where's Jesus at? And they go find him and they woke him up. Oh, listen, don't never forget who's on board your ship. I think of the old song, Oh, Ship of Zion. Oh, listen, I'm a sailing. Life is like on an ocean. We're sailing to the other side. I ain't on my ship myself. I ain't driving my ship myself. I ain't in control of my ship myself. Hey, God's in control of that shield. Don't never forget that. But why did this happen, preacher? I look at it and I say sometimes problems and storms are caused by ourselves. We do it. We cause it. And God just lets us go. You see, that ain't one thing God ain't going to do is grab you and twist your arm and make you serve him. He won't do it. Hey, go ahead, hold out on your tithes. I can't say that here, man. It's been good. But if you was that, go hold out on them. God ain't gonna make you pay them. But there'll come a day you wish you had. Go ahead, don't come to church. He gonna twist your arm, make you go to church. There may come a day in your life you wish you could. Hey, listen, we take things for granted. Hey, we take it for granted. Hey, listen, preacher, we don't need to be fanatic. Hey, we are to be fanatic about the things of God. With what he done, went to Calvary, shed his blood, died, took our sins, was laid upon him. His father turned his back on him. Darkness covered the face of the earth. Hey, to go through what he went through, we ought to do everything we can. We'll never repay him. We'll never repay him. But we are to do everything we can. Brethren, present your bodies a living sacrifice. I beseech you, brethren, is what he said. I beseech you, brethren, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Oh, listen. He, he, he wants you. He wants all of you. He said it is our reasonable service to live for him and to uh, do everything we can for him. He did for us, by the way. He gave everything he had. Went to Calvary. One that owned everything. Hey, for a bunch of people that didn't care nothing about him and didn't look, wasn't looking for him. Preacher, I went looking for Ain't none of us was looking for him. I, I mean, I was raised in church all my life. 
Because that's just the thing we done. Mom and Dad had me in church. Thank God for that. Yep. And when I got out, that, that paid dividends because it kept me from a lot of things when I was out. out. And then God got me back in church. Mm-hmm. Oh, listen. Don't take it for granted. Remember, he's on board. Hey, somebody remembered he was there. Let me give you one, another one. Notice this. He, they, he woke up. He got him up. And he stepped out and rebuked the wind. And spoke to the sea. You know what they done? Smoothed out. Hey, don't forget this. Remember, he's on board. Remember, he has the power to help you. He may not always calm your storm, but he'll give you grace to get through it. And sometimes he might just calm your storm. Peace be still. And it just come down. Oh, listen. I thought about the words of Jesus. Stepping out. Saying, peace be still. And everything just laid down. Boy, if God's people would obey him like the winds and the sea and hey, the birds and animals. If people would obey him and praise him like they do, well, what kind of Christian would we be? Oh, listen, we all fail. I did say all. We all fail. You say, I, I don't fail, preacher. We look at your life long enough, we'll see something. Yeah, we'll see something. And last of all, he had a purpose for him going over to the other side. He already knew he was going, and he knew they was going. And he had a purpose, and he has a purpose in it for our storm. He gets over on the other side, and there's this man. I believe this. I believe he looked out and saw him calm down seas. See, he wanted help. I believe that. Because they bound him. They tied him. Done everything to try to tame him. And they put them fetters and chains on him. And he'd break them asunder. I believe he wanted help. And no man could help him. I wonder how many people's really wanting help. But they're trying everything else in the world. Oh, but Jesus shows up. I believe he looked out. He saw the storm. He saw him calm the storm. And maybe he thought, if I could just get to him, maybe I know he can help me. And he goes, and when he shows up on shore, he runs and falls at his feet. Oh, listen. We find him on over there. He's sitting and he's clothed, and he's in his right mind. Nobody could do that but Jesus. You reckon them disciples looking around saying, boy, that's worth the storm that I just come through. Hey, I look back over my life. I see storms, and I wonder how in the world. I felt like, man, I ain't going to make it. But I look back over my life and say, thank you, Lord. What God's done for me. How he's blessed me. That storm was worth it. That storm made me stronger. It made me a better person. He had a purpose for the storm. I wonder who it might be. It might be somebody here tonight. It might be somebody on Facebook. It might be somebody's going to listen to the radio next Sunday. No, they won't be on there. Lord, if God impressed me, I put it on there. Listen to the radio and hear it. And maybe say, hey, he's on my board of my life. Why am I where I'm at? Let me just go on and serve God. You know what the devil wants? Let's ever want to quit. From the preacher to the teachers, through the deacons. Went up our other night and Larry said, said, it's been a rough year. This year. And he named over the stuff he'd went through, hadn't he? As he sat back and criticized, well, he ain't coming to church. Wonder where he is. You don't know what's going on in people's lives outside the church. Hey, they 
people. You don't know what's going on in people's lives in the church, let alone outside the church. You know what you do in them case? Pray. Pray for them. Oh, listen. Say, God, get them back in here. I sure do miss them. Get them back in here. Thought of Hazel. She's had a pretty rough time. Oh, man, I, should, I miss Hazel. Sure, you say, well, she didn't sing in the choir. She didn't do a whole lot. She was here, and she always had a smile on her face and, and always enjoyed speaking to Hazel. Oh, yes. I wonder if them storm may come suddenly in your life. Maybe God's give you something. It may be 10 years from now, Deb. Some of the, one of the first things that come to my mind when we dealt with that with Ashley and went through all that is what Curtis Barbary preached at Ivy Gal. I don't know how many knows Cur Curtis Barbary. I don't remember where he's from, but he preached revival at Ivy Gal. And he said this, and they will forget it. You think you got it rough? Look around. Hey, somebody's got a lot worse than you do. Sitting down there in Winston-Salem Hospital, actually the first time she was in the hospital after we found out, eight weeks. And there's a girl they found out the same day they found out Aisha had done been in the hospital eight times. Hey, he said something about healing in the church too. He said those times you don't feel like going, go anyway. You'll leave different than you come. Lord, if I went on how I felt, I'd never come. You'd be looking for a new pastor. Hey, sudden storms. And they can come in our life at any time. Just some things. Maybe God will bring to your mind. Maybe some things God will bring to your mind. It's our Father. I sure do thank you for everything that you've done for us. God, how you blessed us. Thank you for this good crowd here on Wednesday night. Lord, I pray you'd fill the need in every heart. God, you know who, and it may be me, that's going to go through a storm. It's going to suddenly come in our life. God, help us remember those four things. God, you're God, and besides you, there are none other. There's nobody else we can depend on but you, and Lord, we're looking to you. And I love you. I thank you for everything that you do, and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.